Hello and welcome back. We're still talking about transfer functions. Yeah? Remember, transfer functions in the plus area are looking like this. There is the system with this transfer function, GS. We do have an input, yeah? Xi, yeah? and we do have an output, Xo. And we said this s, this s is a complex variable and consists of a real part plus an imaginary part. What is behind this? The real part, the real part of this equation, the real part of this function describes the transient things. So things, if there's Happen, let's say there's happening something, yeah. Then here is happening something, and then it might get stable again. Yeah? Hopefully, it will get stable. Yeah? If here is nothing more changes, here this will do something, and then get stable also. Hopefully, yeah? these transient things, the things which will disappear over time, these are described by this real time, by this real part. So, for instance, there is something which is just stopping, yeah? going up slowly and then like a PT1 system. Yeah? This is somewhere here in this real part. Yeah? What is in this imaginary part is the swinging. Okay? So, this shows how swingy this system is. So if we are, if we are uh, somehow uh, influencing the system with a sine wave, with a certain frequency, yeah, whatever is inside here shows how the sine wave with this same certain frequency is looking on the outside, uh, on the output. Okay. This is described by this J omega. This omega, therefore, is the is the frequency. Okay. Omega equals two p and the real frequency. Okay. It's the circular frequency. If we if we are sending in here a sine wave with a certain frequency, that's the circular frequency for this frequency, and we will get an output which can be calculated by now we are leaving a little bit of the, the mathematic correct track however if we just write g for j omega yeah and simply forget about this sigma then it actually works yeah? so if we are sending in here a sine wave with a certain certain frequency we get out a sine wave with exactly the same frequency however the amplitude and so on will be different and remember the amplitude and maybe the phase yeah, will be different and remember we had something already when we, we are talking about measurement yeah? when we talk about measurement we said there is something like a Bode plot. We can get for any given transfer function just by replacing this Laplace variable with j omega, with the imaginary part. Just by replacing this and calculating out of this and calculating out of this for certain frequencies the amplitudes yeah, and the arguments of this of this we get the Bode plot sounds a little bit difficult right now okay but let's say our let's make an example to make it a little bit clearer maybe 
let's say our g from s equals 1 divided by 1 plus 0 dot 1 s. This is our g from s. For whatever reason. Then our g from j omega equals 1 divided by 1 plus 0 dot 1 and now we have an imaginary part and this omega. Okay. This one, the absolute value, the absolute value is absolute value of 1, which is always 1, divided by the absolute value of 1 plus 0 0.1 omega. Yeah? And this is the same like 1 divided by, and now Pythagoras, 1 squared plus 0 0.1 omega squared. Yeah? We can use this with, with several omegas yeah? and get, get something for the, for the absolute value. Okay? And if we want to calculate the argument, for g, it's a division, yeah. So this means this is zero degree, zero degree minus arcus tangens from zero dot one omega divided by one. This is minus arcus tangens zero dot one omega. Okay, this we can also calculate at different omegas, and when, then we get the phase shift. Yeah? And when we remember the Bode plot, yeah? so if we look at the Bode plot, there was this amplitude, and there was this phase shift. And here we can show the amplitude, and here we show the argument, the phase of g at omega. This means, this describes how much later, this is why there's a minus, how much later the output will appear, and this describes how, this describes how much amplification the output will have. Yeah, for different frequencies. Here is the frequency. Okay, so there are different frequencies and we can calculate out from this, we can calculate at different frequencies what are the what are the uh, absolute values. And here for the same frequency we can calculate what is the argument. And we'll end up in such points. Okay? And this thing here is called Bode plot. Okay? We had this. So we can calculate from each transfer function the Bode plot. This is sometimes very useful very useful, especially when we're looking at stability. You will see the Bode plot describes a lot of things according stability. For now, for us it's enough that we know now how to calculate from the transfer function to the Bode plot. Transfer functions. There are some standard transfer functions, special transfer functions, which are models, let's say, for the real world. Yeah? So there is, uh, the real world is never following exactly those models, however we can use those models. Yeah? And how to use these models, we are going to talk next time. And also the following videos will describe one standard element, 
after the other. Okay? There are a bunch of standard elements, and with the help of the standard elements, we can then describe the real world. Okay? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.